So I went and got my MBTI. So I got certified practitioners as an MBTI practitioner. Um, and that was really the first thing, I guess I would say, Diane, that kind of was like, hey, this could be a thing. This could be something. This is an avenue that maybe I hadn't thought about before, but that I really, really liked um, trying to help people understand themselves better so that they can then be more they can be better leaders and they can help their, those around them better. Welcome to the Collaboration Conversation, a new-ish video podcast where Christian artists, entrepreneurs, and friends can share about their upcoming projects and how they are using the gifts and talents that God has given them. We are so excited to share with you guys that the award-winning season one of the Collaboration Conversation has had over 11,000 views across our platform. And so... uh, that we are just in awe of that, and we are so grateful to our listeners. Um, this podcast is part of the um, crowdfunded nonprofit ministry project Brickworks that we started, but we are now accepting uh, sponsors for episodes for this season and next season of the Collaboration Conversation. And so we've got varying sponsorship levels. And to get started, head over to the collaborationconversation.org and click sponsor an episode. Today, our very special guest is Erin Green. Erin is many things, but one of the reasons we love her so much and that she is such an integral part of our lives is that she is our chair uh, chairman for the board of directors for our ministry project Brickworks. And so we are excited to to share with share with her today, to share her with you today. Amen. And she's also a Grey's Anatomy enthusiast. So those of you who are also Grey's Anatomy enthusiasts, stick around to the end for a special trivia extravaganza. (laughs) Erin, thanks for joining us today. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited to be here. It's It's so good to see you guys. It's so good to see your face. (laughs) Well, so um, before you tell us a little bit about yourself, I just thought it would be um, helpful for us to talk a little, at least a little bit about how we know each other. Yes. Um, We, uh, at a job I used to have, we were going to have a leadership academy for a couple of years and you were hired I don't know if that was the only thing you were hired for, but at least it was one of the things. Um, and you came and did, I mean, our the, just the most important part. It was two days and you just wrapped everything up. And we sat and had lunch every Thursday and Friday, every three months, I think maybe was the schedule, three or four months. Oh, it was They're about, It varied a little bit, but yes, yes. It was wonderful. And what did we have? We had... Was it Carolyn's Kitchen? What was... Oh, Yes. 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 Was that what it was? But and then, then you also got us Mexican, which was my was, favorite. So yeah, it was Moe's. <laughs> and I always think, welcome yes. Moe's. Welcome yeah. to Moe's. Um, and that was some good stuff. And then we would, if there was ever any leftovers, we'd pack it up and you'd take some <laughs> home and I'd take some home. And um, But so I was talking with one of our other board members and I said, you know, it just makes so much sense for you to be the chairman because you walked through much of the planning. I mean, it took a, a year and a half or so. You know, and I think you may have even been the first person that we talked to about it. Talked to about it, yeah. yeah. So, no, I um, can vividly remember being in that room and us sitting at lunch. And I always, that was one of my favorite parts about being there was being able to see you and getting to have those lunches. Um, and you tell me, and I was like, do it, do it, Diane, <laughs> do it. Yes. And you were like, I don't know. I'm like, no. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really neat to be able to be there from that. What I'll put in my, from my perspective to start to seeing you yes. guys flourish so well and making such a difference. That's what's really. So, well, thank you. Well, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. You know, you just, you have no idea what the Lord has in store. I mean, I really probably yeah. couldn't have done this if I hadn't lost my job, yeah. you know, and then, I mean, within months, a pandemic. I mean, it's crazy to, to think of all of those changes. Um, but anyway, we I love you. It's so funny. Um, you know, Sarah and I are super close, right? Practically yes. can read each other's minds. And she was, we, it was right before our first board meeting. And she was just like, you know, uh, how did you pick her? And all this <laughs> stuff. So as soon as the board meeting was over, she's like, okay, well, that's, why, it. that's yeah. why you picked her. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it's like, I get it. And- I mean, uh, you're, obviously you're so insanely smart and competent and, uh, you know, thoughtful. And it was just great. Her reaction was like, yep, I get it. Well, and I had, I knew who you were. I, I mean, yeah. obviously through just you guys working together and yeah. you had talked so highly of her. So 
yeah, it was, I was like, well, that's why <laughs> I got it. It was awesome. <laughs> no, so. I appreciate it. No, it's, it's, it's an honor to be able to um, be a part of Project Brickworks. And um, I'm really, really excited for the future. I see some really, I'm, I'm excited. There's going to be some awesome things awesome. for sure. Well, good. All right. We'll start with telling us about yourself. Oh my goodness. Okay. This is always the tough question for me. Um, you know, it's, um, so first and foremost, I am a wife, um, and I am a mother. So, um, I am a mother of two boys, Henry and Nathan, who are 11 and eight. Uh, we just had their back to school day today, this morning. So we did all the fun things there. Um, yay. But I'm also a wife to a college soccer coach, which um, I bring up specifically because it dictates our life <laughs> in yeah. so many ways. Um, and then I'm also, I'm currently, so, um, you know, Diane, you talk about when we met and we shortly after, well, before, right before you left, I guess, I we moved from Nashville to Louisville here um, for my husband's job. And with that brought about a big change for me because I'd always wanted to get my PhD but I never knew how long we were going to be in a place. And, you know, I didn't want to start something I couldn't finish. So with this move, I put something that had been on the back burner for literally 20 plus years and told my husband, I was like, I'm not even applying for a job. I'm not even looking for one. I'm getting my PhD. Um, So I didn't look for a job. I came, I contacted somebody I knew here. And so I'm a PhD student, but um, I'm also now as of August one, a full-time professor within the, College of Education and Human Development with the University of Louisville. So, so now I've kind of got a dual role going on. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm a sister. I'm the youngest of three. Um, yeah, it, uh, that's, I guess, kind of in a nutshell who I am from that standpoint. But yeah. definitely my family keeps me busy. And, uh, you know, we had an orientation this week and they're like, where is your home? And I was like, oh, that's always a tough question for me because we move. <laughs> yeah. So right. I'm like, you know, my home is where my boys and my husband are. Cause that's just kind of our, our tight little nucleus of four. Um, and, uh, we've all developed resilience and oh, flexibility right. and adaptability with yes. everywhere that we go. Um, and grateful for where we've been from the standpoint of, of all the great people that we've met and everything. So yeah. um, that's awesome. Well, well, you call yourself a trailing spouse. I, you know, it's interesting. So I never did before we got here. And I started working for a professor here who is a, um, her husband was in the military and she kept using the term, I'm a trailing spouse, I'm a trailing spouse. And I was like, Dr. Her, what, what is it? What does this mean? And she's doing research around it. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a trailing spouse. <laughs> uh, so yes, I do. I do. I, I, it's a term that I use now because I think it's something that I kind of never knew really how to explain. But when I understood what it was, I was like, yes, that's me. Is that, you know, essentially, um, you know, when my husband and I got married, we met in West Virginia and, you know, I had huge career aspirations for working in college athletics and didn't anticipate meeting him. Um, but here was this cute soccer guy and I was like, okay, I need to know more. Um, and, you know, I was supposed to be in West Virginia for 18 months to finish my first master's. Seven years, a kid and a husband wow. later, <laughs> yep. left. Um, so anyway, we made the decision that he we were going to follow his career. Um, he had put a lot of sweat, tears, literally everything into it and um, really had a passion. You know, he actually has his degree in finance, but that he always says, you know, he went for one interview in a suit and tie and got to the front door and was like, nope, not for me. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And he's been coaching soccer ever since, whether it's been sleeping on couches or whatever, because it's a tough industry to get into. Yeah. Um, So anyway, so we decided we're going to follow his career. So with that, I've kind of had to be a chameleon. And so when we, an opportunity comes for him, we have the conversation and we usually go if it's right. Yep. (laughs) And then I'm a good fit. Trailing along, bringing up (laughs) the pieces, everything from packing up the house to the kids to, finding myself a job and all that good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you kind of touched on it earlier, but now it's kind of, you know, you got to Louisville and you're like, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to do something for me now, which is awesome. So talk to us a little bit about your PhD. What what are you getting? What are you getting that in? And um, what kind of classes do you teach? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's Diane, your comment kind of about you never know. Like, that's the one thing, I guess, being a trailing spouse, I've had to come to kind of come come to terms with. I'm a planner by heart. I think you know that about me. I'm, yes. I'm, I could be pretty type A, um, <laughs> but I've had to recognize that there's only so much I can control. Um, and so um, I, 
in, in my PhD program, it's under the heading of organization of what are we? Educational leadership and organizational development with the specialization in sport administration. Um, and so what I've figured out is I don't have to be working in college athletics for it to be a career passion. Um, I've figured out that I can do this um, in a different way. So now instead of having to work 80 hour weeks and miss my kids games or, um, you know, just not be as present as I want in my family's life, I can help the next generation of college athletic leaders and other leaders within the athletic world um, through teaching them. So I get to do teach, I get to teach and I get to do research. So I teach, um, I'm teaching introduction to sport administration. I'm teaching the undergrad um, sport management and leadership class, and then the graduate class in sport management and leadership. So, so um, cool. those are my classes that I'm teaching this semester. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. I think it's very important that any class that you teach needs to have the word leadership in it. Yes. <laughs> Every that single is, one. That, Yes, that's those two are my passion for sure. Um, I'm really excited. I've I've taught the grad class, oh gosh, for four semesters now, um, okay. and it's really fun. Yeah, awesome. So. When do you have an, an ETA an estimated date when you'll finish your PhD? A goal? Yes, yes. So um, I am going to finish. That's the strong statement. Yep. I'm going to finish in 2022. I'm not Yay. putting a exact time on, line on it. Um, Mainly because um, I'm going to be doing qualitative research. So I'll be doing interviews and I don't want to limit the people that I need to talk to. I've got to be on their schedule as much as my schedule. Right. right. So I'm trying right. to be flexible with that aspect. So I'm hoping that's ideally awesome. it'd be August of 2022, but if it's December, that's okay too. That's okay so. too. Well, we'll be praying yes. over that for sure. That's very exciting you. for you. I'm very, you. We're very excited. But you are done with your coursework, right? You're yes. just dissertation. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Nice. I am in full dissertation and I actually already have a lot of it written up. I just have to get through a couple of hurdles, um, procedural hurdles, I guess, right. if you will, and then go from there. So yeah. Sweet. I'm looking forward to it. Yes. You know, if I could, there's a few things that I would like to bottle. Like um, when I was at admissions, watching a kid realize this is where they wanted to go to school. Yeah. You know, yeah. I took Sarah to a college and they rolled out the red carpet and I mean, they did everything right. I was so impressed. And we're on the, we're walking around on the tour for, by, by the dorms and she goes, yeah, I'm not feeling it. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> um, so I would love to bottle that. I know that this is my college. Okay, but then thing. I went to the college that I went to and I had that feeling. Right. You had it. That's what I'm saying. I want to oh, bottle. I see. Yeah. I want to bottle that feeling. But the other thing I want to bottle is you teaching about leadership. <laughs> I mean, oh, I would be a billionaire. Um, it just, that is just such it's just part of you, you know, I mean, and really, we hadn't even talked about discussing this, but, you know, how did you know that that was going to be something that you really wanted to teach people about? I didn't. <laughs> and I still don't. I mean, I love it. I, I love it from the standpoint of I see it. Um, so, so I started off in athletic academic advising, and that's kind of where my, my paths cross with Brian a little bit. And one thing, I think what I figured out there was that I really like to help people. Um, so in that role, you know, I was really helping students determine and figure out what is the major they're going to be in. You know, what are there some of their aspirations after college, um, which can be really daunting for an 18 year old. You know, it's like, OK, first day of classes. What do you want to major in? You're like, I don't know. My mom's a teacher. My dad's an accountant. Let's go with accounting. You know, right, and then right. they get a class into it and they're like, ah, no. Um, but then I, 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 I liked I found a passion for organization development and from that standpoint of like understanding what makes people work together well um, and how do we be our best selves. Um, and that's essentially what my research is focusing on is the employee experience within intercollegiate athletics. Um, but the people, you know, um, I'm, I'm not a, I'll be a self, I'm, I'm not a numbers person. I mean, I, I can do it, but I, I'm, what is that person's experience? How are you leaving them? Um, and are we taking care of our people? Um, and so that's, I, I guess that's kind of how it came to be. Um, just very, very random and organic. Um, yeah. You know, Sarah, you mentioned that, you know, kind of when we made this move, I was doing something for myself and that's true. But when we moved to Nashville, I was trying to figure out where I was going to work. And did I want to get back into college athletics? We had two kids for the first time and, you know, college athletics has great rewards, but it, 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 it can really wear you out. Um, it yeah. can really, I mean, burnout's a real thing in there. Um, and with Brian's schedule, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, I mean, 
basically in the fall, it's okay. Preseason started this Monday. It's like, okay, we'll see you with the games and we'll see you in November. Hopefully right. December, if you make postseason, you know, um, <laughs> right. so when you're the trailing spouse, you kind of have to figure everything out while they're doing the thing. Um, so I, uh, when we moved to Nashville, I said, I want to do something for myself. And that was really, I was really trying to figure out that passion about organization development stuff. And so I went and got my MBTI. So I got certified practitioners as an MBTI practitioner. Um, and that was really the first thing, I guess I would say, Diane, that kind of was like, Hey, this could be a thing. This could be some, this is an avenue that maybe I hadn't thought about before, but that I really, really liked um, trying to help people understand themselves better so that they can then be more, they can be better leaders and they can help their, those around them better. Um, yeah. And we can help understand each other better. I think that's, you know, one thing that I think there's a lot of misunderstandings that cause bigger conflict than they need to. Um, totally. So anyway, sorry. Well, well, can, really quick. What does that stand for? For those uh, Myers Brig type indicator. Oh, Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. ENFJ. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm an Enneagram three, <laughs> just so that you know who I am. <laughs> yes. Yes. See, you know, I think that's important. I think it's good. You know, I think it's important people recognize they don't put themselves in boxes, but that yes. you know at your core, that's who you are, and um, cool. recognizing that. What's so, yeah. yours? What? What What's am I? Yours? Yeah. So I'm an ISTJ. Okay. But I am out of preference. And S um, between S and um, N and T and F and a lot of things. Okay, um, I'm I'm very complex, is what I. Like. <laughs> well, That's great. But you use the word chameleon. That works yeah. so well to describe just your adaptability. Um, and I mean, I've watched you in action. It's so funny, and I feel really bad about saying this because when the, we had the other guest come in, the other teachers uh, teachers that came in you know i shut the door i go back to my office but when you were there i keep the door open just a little bit and i just sit there back at the table and listen because it, you know i never I, my cohort I never got to go through your class which is the biggest crime of all time i mean i'll never i might i might hire you just to come do those two <laughs> days for me but um it just i loved i loved how you um I mean, it was just this it, it was art to, yeah. wa- to watch you oh, tie you. tie all of these things together, you know, whether it's a personality, whether it's, I don't know, and you had them painting rocks. And I mean, it was just, <laughs> it was so creative and it was wonderful. So, well, and I think, I think you said that you really like helping people, but it's, it's the matrix because those people are going to go on to be good leaders and help others. And then those people are going to go on to be good leaders and help others. So it's, it's just, I don't know, it's like the ripple effect. You're making that, yeah. that drop in. And there it's going to go. Um, and I think I think knowing the people that you're that are working for you or with you um, as a good leader. I mean, I think that's what makes a good leader is is yeah. knowing the types of people. And so I, I just totally believe in what you were just preaching there. Cause yeah, I'm on board. <laughs> well, so as far as the classes go, what like, you know, who's 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 the demographic? Are they all in the same sports program or and, and what's your favorite class to teach? So sport management leadership is definitely my favorite class to teach. Um, And the grad class, the grad class, actually, Diane, we we have organized it to be a lot like a workshop kind of um, from the standpoint of they take different assessments. Obviously it's different right now. Most things are are, um, online, which Uh, is a little bit, that that was a transition for me from coming from teaching. And I mean, you probably saw with me in the class or in the, I'll say classroom just for lack of better words, but you know, I think dialogue is really important when you're learning and conversation. So that was something I had to get used to with the online learning was there was no dialogue. (laughs) It was, here's a video of me and, um, you know, hope you get it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. But, um, I figured out ways to try to interact with students. Uh, we have them do this thing called voice thread. And so essentially it's, they take they, every week they have to submit um, a, like a little two, a one to two minute video kind of summarizing some of their leadership challenges, opportunities, um, successes that they had in that week. Um, and I get to watch those and then I respond to them. And then, so we get to have a little bit of a dialogue around what it is they're experiencing, how it relates to what we're talking about in class. Um, but it's, I think the big thing is, is it's, there's, there's face, you know, it's yes. not just written words. There's, yeah. um, so they have to work on their ability to, uh, speak as I can, I'm not doing right now, um, <laughs> great. and be concise, you know, and what they're sharing, but also, um, being able to me being able to see them. So it's not just a name on a paper. Mm. Um, that's probably one of my favorite things. And it's funny. They always start off at the beginning of the semester and they're like, Oh, I don't, I don't like these voice threads, you know? 
And the feedback I get at the end of the semester is, I really didn't like them. I learned to love them. Um, oh, yay. So, um, but yeah, that's my favorite class to teach. I really do because I think it, we, I've taken a lot of what, we, what I did with um, professional development with um, when I was at HCA and then when I was at the other uh, place and uh, trying to kind of give our students a little bit of a leg up, if you will, and that they don't have to wait until they're, you know, 20 years into their career to kind of know who they are. Mm-hmm. They can get some of that information now. Um, because to your point, Sarah, my whole thing is, is recognizing that our leaders need to be really good people, people. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and, and we don't always good, do that. Right. And even just to be a good coworker. Yeah. Um, so many workplace squabbles and things would, would just not be there or, or would be easily resolvable if, yeah. if we really listened and understood the other person's personality type, what it is they need, um, how they operate and how they work, and then have compassion for the the difference, the juxtaposition yeah. possibly f- the, from you, maybe it's completely opposite, opposite, and to have compassion and understanding um, in that, I think, you know, anyway, you're doing the good work, fighting the good fight. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying. Well, so, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's yeah, really good. Fun, so. I'm glad. One of the things I remember um, about one of the assessments you all did um, was I finished it. Uh, you know, I finished and I'm sitting there with the results and I'm hard, I'm hard, it's hard to breathe. And I'm uh, the, it was a volunteer that was leading my group, poor guy. And he said, you look really upset. I said, I am. <laughs> and he said, what's wrong? I said, I am in the wrong job. And he goes, oh, oh, I don't think you can, you can determine that just from this assessment. I said, oh, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, yes, I am in the <laughs> wrong am. job. Yeah. And this is probably maybe a year or so um, before I lost, lost my job. Yeah. But, um, uh, you know, you said you it takes, for some people, you know, it takes 20 years, yeah. you know, to figure out who they are. Oh, my gosh. I, I figured out after 20 years – I was, I was, it wasn't that I was doing the wrong thing. I loved, loved, loved helping kids go to college. So that yes, wasn't the wrong thing. I you was did, just doing and you were great wrong, at it. Thank you. Well, it was just with the wrong organization. And I mean, it was jarring to sit, to think I've got to go back to work on Monday or whatever it was, you know, <laughs> right. at a place where I'm so ill, I'm such an ill fit and I'm so not aligned based upon all of these things that are valuable to me and, and yeah. that are uh, core importance or, yeah. or whatever. So, oh my gosh. I mean, literally, if I could look back on my life, I, you know, there's key people, right? A pastor or youth pastor or, you know, folks that have impacted me beyond family. And you are, yeah. you are at the top of the list with just all of that, all of that truth that you bring when you, you know, share this. I mean, and I'm sure that there's lots of folks who feel that way. You know, they're, you're going to be their favorite professor. I love that. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, I yeah. hope if nothing else, they leave learning about themselves, you know, and that, it, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, um, again, it's been so weird being online because you just don't get to build those relationships. And that's, again, another big part of it is the relationship. But and, um, yeah, you're so good at that. Yeah. I w- haven't always been, though. Actually, I was really bad at it early on. Uh, I had, because keep in mind, my preference is introversion. So yeah. I am, I do not get recharged in a group. Um, yeah. But, you know, like, for instance, with that aspect, you know, a lot of my students, when they take the, we, we do the MBTI um, and they're like, oh, I can't speak in public. And I'm like, OK, hold on. Time out. That is not what that means. Let's let's really focus on this, because there's so many misconceptions even about what what different labeling means and what words mean. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something I guess is kind of one of my personal battles is it's like, no, 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 no introvert if you have a preference for introversion <laughs> you can speak you can do that you know it's not it's, it's not about that um, right so just trying to help them recognize who they are what they bring to the table but then to your point diane like what is a good organization for me what should i be looking for yeah. and recognizing i don't just need to take a job to take a job yeah oh totally and i'm gonna tie it into our podcast here you know you're talking about knowing who you are so that it it dictates is too strong of a word, but so that it can enhance where you yeah. your choices and yeah. where you work and what you do. And I think the same goes for talents and gifts. Yeah. I think being super aware of what you bring to the table, um, where what you don't bring to the table, <laughs> or what you need somebody else to bring to the table, and just being super aware of that is only going to make you a better coworker, a better friend, a better parent, yeah. a better spouse, um, a better leader. And so. 
on that segue note, let's yes. talk about some talents and some gifts. Um, tell us, Aaron, what what obviously leadership is one and, you know, communication is one, but um, touch on those and kind of when you developed those and when you kind of found that that was your thing and um, what other talents and gifts you think you might have. Oh, that's so funny to hear you say that. I don't know that I would say that those are my <laughs> talents and gifts. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's, I don't know, I guess it's ironic. I don't know what the right word is because, um, you know, I, and maybe part of it is the fact that, you know, my philosophy with leadership is, is that it's a continuous process. It's a growing, you're, con- we're all constantly growing and evolving and it's never a done product. You know, it's, 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 it's always happening. Um, but I think I, 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 and I, you know, it's funny because going back to being a trailing spouse, you know, literally I've had to be a chameleon. So I've had to, at times take a job to take a job because quite frankly, I needed a job that was bringing money in. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I never thought that I'd work at a law school, but I did for three and a half years. Um, but I also told myself, you know, I was like, I don't know what this picture is going to look like, but at the end of this, I'm going to look back and I'm going to be like, okay, this helped with this, this helped with this, and this helped with this. And while I never would have said, I never would have planned it that way, um, those experiences really did benefit me in the long run. Um, so I think one of my gifts that I never would have given myself credit for earlier on is that ability to be adaptable and to let things just go. Yeah. Um, because like I said, I very much was a type A, um, but I think it's also having two boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Yeah. But, um, and then I think the other thing that I've been, I'm just really passionate about is um, I really do try to, when I'm with people, I want to hear their stories. Um, and, you know, I, I hope, Diane, like you saw that with some of the work, but like trying to really let people be their true, genuine, authentic self um, and giving them that comfort and that safety and that space to be that person and not feeling like they have to hide anything. Um, you know, so really I try I, I, to summarize, it, I guess I would say kind of meeting people where they are yeah. um, mm-hmm. and really building that relationship with them so that they can feel that level of comfort to 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 be comfortable with who they are. Absolutely. Well, I definitely saw it. It's funny. You know, I worked with those people and you didn't, right? You would just come in and meet them for the first time. And I mean, legit, you spent two days with them. But, you know, I would see sides of people that I had like no idea existed. You know, if they're a strong introvert and they never left their office and that I've never had a conversation and they're sitting there at lunch and they're very upset that I've come in there because I've, I'm taking your time. They want to tell you their life story. And I'm just watching this going, oh, my gosh, she's like this magnet for your story. Or <laughs> I don't know what it is. But um, it was just it was so cool to see. And people would tell you things that I'm thinking, you probably shouldn't say that in public. <laughs> but they are just pouring out, pouring the whole thing out to, to you. And I, I, it was so fun to watch that. And I'm sure that's continuing. I just don't get to pay it for yes. it or see it. I hope you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, that's just, and you're, you're, you make me want to go back to college. I'm like, can I, can I go to law school? No, you, no, you can't go to school. <laughs> well, and your boys have got to be, oh my gosh, they're going to just grow up so balanced and so like in tune. Yes. Or competitive. Awesome. Oh my goodness. The competitive <laughs> yes. juices are full for us. Oh man, I believe that. <laughs> and they both play soccer, right? They both play soccer. Yes. I mean, it, like I said, soccer literally dictates you're a, their life. Uh, a soccer well, family. And you play soccer. I, I do this fall. It's probably, I, I'm going to have to just be a guest player because I can't commit to a full season. Um, but I do, I love it. You know, it's something that um, for me was um, as a kid was really my identity. Um, and, you know, when you play college sports, it's a really interesting thing because literally you go from doing something probably for, you know, 10 plus years and literally a whistle blows and it's like, you're done. And you're kind of left going, wait a minute, what do I do now? Oh, yeah. You know, when every minute of your life had basically been planned out um, because of that activity. Yeah. So um, that was a big transition too. So trying to figure out, I stayed away from it for a little while while the boys were little, but now that they're bigger and they can go and watch. Um, I have to also remind them since they see my husband with soccer so much. So I'm like, mommy played too. Yeah. <laughs> you have some of your skills from mommy. Don't so get it don't twisted. Don't give it all to dad's credit. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, it's so funny. Uh, my husband and oldest son and I went up to uh, yes, University yes, of Louisville hey. to see a game uh, where your husband was coaching, which is so funny because he was so busy. We never even got to meet him. I know. Uh, we'll have to do that again so we can uh, maybe get dinner the next day or something. In November, know. apparently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or December. Well, well, 
Yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah, <laughs> but um, it was so funny, and don't be mad at this because this is t- totally putting you in a box, and I don't mean to. But I'm walking around looking for you, and every soccer family's the same. <laughs> uh, all these really fit moms that are po- cute blonde ponytails, and I'm like, oh my gosh! And Bo goes, what does she look like? I said, like her and her <laughs> and her, and you know, and the kids who all have soccer equipment with them, and you know, it was adorable. It was so, it was fun. It was, and, and it was great to see you, kind of in a, you know, kind of a different pers- environment, yeah. yeah, your personal world. So yeah, that was that's a, for for us a great memory. We were glad we went, and, and I mean, they got, you know, that was an incredible stadium. Oh, yes. No, they're very, yeah, the university is very blessed and the, the, the uh, program is very blessed. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, I, again, obviously we love the sport. And I mean, um, you know, Brian gets to do a little bit of what I do, but just with the soccer field kind of as his background. Um, but it's fun too, the fact that I played, you know, we have a lot of conversations around soccer. He'll come home after practice and it helps that I know what he's talking about. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, we just uh, we just started watching Ted Lasso. I don't know if you guys have seen I've it. I've heard of it. A, I haven't seen it though. Yeah. Anyway, it's about an American football coach who goes to England to coach soccer. Um, and in one of the press conferences, the guy's like, "Can you explain offsides?" <laughs> of course, he can't at all. <laughs> right. So anyway, it, it's helpful that we have that kind of that dialogue together. That's and funny, you know, I. I challenge him with things too, when it comes to the team and organizational dynamic stuff and everything. And I'm like, why is he, why why are you doing it that way? (laughs) That's awesome. So, um, but yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, yeah. That gives him a kind of a advantage because not all the other coaches wives can speak into that in a really practical way. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's helpful because one, you know, one, I recognize like his schedule right now. Like I don't, I don't dismiss him, but like, I also know not to really rely on him for anything right now. And I don't right. harbor ill will in that regard. Yeah. Just, that's just the business. That's just what we're, what it is. Um, but then it is, and it's fun for me because like through him, I kind of get to be connected and, you know, get to have those conversations and hear those different scenarios that I can bring back as examples in my class and talk with my students about. Um, yes. So it's a very, it's a, I think it's a very healthy um, relationship from that aspect of just, you know, being able to share each other's worlds and, um, and continuously learn from each other. You know, yeah. I mean, again, I'll say, I don't think that's the way to do it. And he'll be like, <laughs> I disagree. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I love it. Well, and that's, it just seems like it comes full circle. So that's perfect. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. It does. It does. Well, good. And the good. boys of course love the fact that they get to run out on the field and, well, yeah. you know, they think they own the stadium and I'm sure. You know, Yes, well, they, they kind of do. It's true. <laughs> they think they do. Yes, yeah. in a non-COVID world, they have a little freedom. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Well, but I love when a kid has a safe place like that. Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, they really can go anywhere. I was on. This is so off subject, but I was on the board of directors for a baseball um, club. Is what it's called, but in Fra- in Franklin and okay. um, I was I did that for a number of years, and both of my boys played in that league. And the, a lady came in one day, the lady who ran the, the snack bar, and she said, um, we have a problem. There is a kid who is at the games, and he's just running around like a maniac. And, you know, there's, he's completely not supervised. And she's describing him, and I'm just sitting there going, well, that's my child, and I'm not saying a word <laughs> until later. But he just felt, right? It was his yeah. second home. We were there all the time. Yeah. So I did have to rein that in a little bit. but <laughs> Yeah, we do too. We do too sometimes. <laughs> There's times we have to remind them this is a public space. And, yeah. you know, um, but it's also really cute too. You know, it's, it's a cool feeling for them to get to see dad on TV sometimes or, yes. you know, yeah. um, and, you know, and the players, the players are fantastic. I mean, it really does become a family and the head coach and his wife have been fantastic. Um, and so it's, I mean, it's, it truly is it can take over your life, but in a very good way, you yes. know, um, in a very, right. very good way. So very we cool. Feel blessed awesome. that way. Well, the two of you have something in common. Oh yes. We have to talk about Me Grey's too. Anatomy. I'm oh, very nervous. Oh no. I'm gonna, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not nervous for I, you because I know you're going to be fine. <laughs> but see, this is where I'm like, I need Brian because see, Brian and I have watched it mm. since we've been together and he's always like, it's kind of like, you know, the name, the tunes, like he could name the song and I can name the person. Oh, yes. So I'm like, Oh, I see. Okay. So a, a true team. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. You're going to fly solo and you're going to be great. Okay, I'm going to do it. (laughs) So we're going to do a little bit of Grey's Anatomy trivia. We've got a few questions here. Are you ready? I think so. Question number one. Do you have a buzzer? What do I do? Yeah, right? (laughs) (laughs) At the moment, I don't have any options for you. (laughs) So uh, this is a little bit of a last minute ad. So uh, we're just going to see how it goes. All right. The hospital that they all work at has gone through many a name change. What was the original name of the hospital that the interns worked at? Give her some options. Seattle Grace. Seattle Grace. She doesn't oh, need nice. She doesn't done. need any <laughs> any multiple choice. I knew it. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Next question. This is my favorite question. <laughs> I'm a little bit biased. How many seconds before? How many seconds before did Erica Hahn's patient get admitted to the transplant list? Before Denny Duquette on the show. Oh goodness! That's a very specific you, question. Yes, Sarah. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, is, how many seconds? C- well, kind of remind her. Like, like one. Um, she, she she remember you remember the situation in the scene. I'll give you some. I can give you some multiple choice on this one if you would like. Sure. Yes. Yeah. All that right, was so a while ago. <laughs> it, it it was. It's just. It's honestly one of my like. I watch. It so, sometimes I watch that scene from an actor perspective just to like. Yes. Get there. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. I can see that. Totally, yes. So your options are A, 15 seconds, B, 12 seconds, or C, 17 seconds. I'm going to go with B. It's 17 seconds. 17. C. What is – why Why is that – She just She just says it like – do, do the uh, scene. I don't. I'm, I can't do the scene, do mom. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> but but you know, it's Catherine Heigl and, and yes. she's on the verge of tears, and she's like, people are clocked into the second, Denny, to the second. And I look to see when you were clocked <sighs> in and when he was clocked in, and you want to know the difference between it? Seventeen seconds. Seventeen seconds. De- anyway, so it's just one of my favorite <laughs> scenes. So that was that was a really hard question. I'll give you that. That was super hard. That was but, tough. Yes, I know. Sorry. Maybe that's a question that only I would know. And me and, Kat- <laughs> me and Catherine Heigl, and that's it. Um, sorry. All right, moving on. The uh, the show was originally going to be called Complications, which is not Terrible. as good of a title. Um, where did the show eventually get its name from? Well. The main character is Meredith Grey, but yes. her mom is um, was a well known surgeon. Yes, and I think she it came from her, didn't it? It came it came from Meredith's mom. It that's why they named her Grey, but it's actually a medical, a true, real life medical textbook. It's Grey's Anatomy. Oh, oh, really? Like, fun fact: If you didn't know that, yeah, it's a. It's I a medical, did not. It's a medical textbook, and I mean, I'm assuming that it's kind of both that. She, they named right. her Meredith Grey, but then there's also this textbook. I'm sure it was like a conglomeration of both. But yeah, it's, it's much text. better than complications. It's I don't so know that much at all. Better, Way better than complications. Honestly, that sounds like a soap opera, which arguably, <laughs> arguably is kind of Grey's Anatomy, just on a better level. But um, all right, uh, next question. Other than her uh, love for Mark, what was special about Meredith's sister, Lexi? This oh, she had, she was super sporty. She, she could read, she had a picture, um, she had photographic memory. That's Nicely it. Done. She had a photographic <laughs> memory. Yes. Yes. And this one I wouldn't know because I binged the show, uh, eventually. I, I did not watch it when it first came out, but what year did Grey's Anatomy first air? Do you know? This so is the last they just question. signed the contract for season 14, I think. That, m- that might help you. Maybe. Maybe do math. No, no it no might math. not help you. No. <laughs> it's it'll get you close. So we were in Morgantown, West Virginia. <laughs> so <laughs> perfect. Let's see. This is what I have to go by. I usually yep. get my moves based on what child was it born and which one wasn't. That's it. right. Um, I'm gonna say two thousand and I'm gonna say the year. I'm gonna say two thousand and nine ish. Five. Which was is, it five? Okay. Which is crazy that it has been on air for 16 years so and yeah so literally so brian and i started dating in 2003 yeah so then that yeah like we've so it's really been an, an integral part of your i was just saying it's a really <laughs> important part of your relationship it, it really is i mean and it's funny because like i mean he may not like me for saying this but like i mean he we lo- watch it every thursday it's like a, a date oh, i love that like, oh. do you watch did you watch the spinoffs um we watched a little bit of private practice 
but not really. No, we never, private practice got a little too much for me. Okay. I, and I, I think Grey's and I'm not, I'm not the artistic that you are when it comes to movies and things like that. But like, I think they've done a really good job with the character development. Yeah. Um, now sure. granted Meredith literally has nine lives. I mean, you <laughs> can have their hand in the bomb a and she'll be <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but the, but even her character, like it's been fun to see her. And I guess really yeah. maybe besides friends. I mean, I grew up watching friends and I love friends. Mm, yeah. Um, and it's really funny now because my mom got me a little desk calendar with friend stuff. And I never, like, I don't really use it, but the boys and Henry uses it. And so now he has this strong interest. He's like, mom, can I watch your friends with you? Can I watch your friends with you? And so I let him watch it one time and I asked him, I said, bud, I was like, why do you like watching it so much? She goes, I like how it makes you laugh. And I was like, oh, that's so So sweet. He's so sweet. He's like, and he wants to know everything. He's like, is that Joey? Is that, is that Chandler? And their, their sister, and it's so funny him trying to figure it all out. So anyway, that might be once he's a little bit older. I think we need a little bit more age. Yeah. That might be something he and I can rewatch can do together. together. Um, that is so sweet. Cool. I love that. Well, and it's so funny that, I mean, think of it. Now we binge watch everything. Right. But you guys literally sat down every week and then you had to wait a week to see the next episode. We did. It was torture. And yes. you still do. I can't. I cannot with that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Full on did, date yeah. night. And you guys yeah. are truly dedicated. That's awesome. Well, you did great. You did great. Thanks. I'm glad that we both have I'm glad a, I'm the most entertaining. Have a love for the show, which is obviously a super massive success because it's been on forever. Um, forever. Literally forever. And so uh, well, we're so grateful for your time and that you joined us today. Oh, amen. And, and thank you for being my friend. Yes. No, and- thank you. I'm so, so, so happy and grateful and um, everything that our paths crossed. And Oh, God is so good. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Every, every time we have a board meeting, I'm I'm like, this is in good hands. <laughs> I have I wake up like not even worried about it. And you know me, I'm running around trying to get my to do list done. Yes, and yes. Kind of frantic. And then even we had some technical difficulties, and you guys just started without me. Sorry. Because you were well, no, that's just that's who you are. You're in charge, and you're confident, and you. Um, you're just such a blessing to everybody. So yeah, that was it's true. It was wonderful. My husband was like, "Wow, what would we do without her?" Oh Honestly, gosh, that's true. It's Amen. True. Well, we love you, and we are praying we love, for you, and, you, and we're so excited for um, for your potential soon PhD. That's very exciting. We're praying over that, yes. and just all of your goings on and your beautiful, beautiful family. Well, thank you guys so much. I love you guys. I'm so proud of all the work that you guys are doing, and I can't wait to see Project Brickworks in like five, ten years and yes. everything that you guys have touched and changed thank you. and all the lives you've helped. Oh, well, so. thank you so much, and we will see you later. All right. Love see ya. you guys. Bye. Bye. For more information on Project Brickworks, visit us online at projectbrickworks.org. Subscribe to our newsletter or text BRICK to 55498 to get the latest news and updates. And to catch up on previous episodes, head over to thecollaborationconversation.org. We love y'all, be blessed, and we'll see you next time. 